We're from the Round Mounds of the Isle of Man project and this summer we began an excavation at Burke Farm which is just outside Kirk Michael on three burial mounds. Uh, we just opened a small quarter of one of them and during the excavation we found a kist which is a kind of a stone container that the dead were placed in in prehistory and within the kist there was a, a pottery vessel that we call a collared urn and the urn was inverted so turned upside down in the bottom of the kist. Usually when we find these things they often contain cremated remains and so what we did was we lifted the whole thing as a block uh, wrapped it in bandages and cling film to hold it together, make it secure, and we brought it to the museum so that we could excavate it here and that we could have Michelle, who's an expert osteologist, come and do the excavation for us. So then when the pot was here, I was able to um, excavate it very carefully using small tools and not having to worry about the elements like wind, water, etc. And was able to very carefully take down the layers to expose the bone. And we actually found um, a child in there. So we had an infant skeleton that I've been able to pull apart and identify and found that the bones were very, very fragile, very, very breakable. So it was really good for me to be able to see the bones in situ in the pot um, because often when they were lifted out, they just went all to pieces so uh, yeah it was good to get to excavate that here. So the bigger project is all about learning about changing burial practices on the Isle of Man through the Neolithic and the Bronze Age. In terms of the pot by having an expert like Michelle do it we can get the most possible data out of it to try and learn a little bit about the individual that was placed within it. Part of this project in general has been for me to be here to look at uh, all of the bones that have been excavated over the past 200 years uh, in the Isle of Man related to the Neolithic and the Bronze Age and so most of these are cremated bones which is burned bones um, and from that I'm not actually able to get a ton of information uh, typically because they're usually very very small fragments I don't always have all of the contextual information from excavations that took place let's say in the 1800s or early 1900s so my main thing there is to establish um, how many people are in the in the in the burial um, maybe what sex they are whether I can give an age estimation that kind of thing um, and if I'm able to do that using what we call standard osteological techniques which is basically just looking at things like growth and development of the human which we've got scales of assessment for um, when we do sex estimation there's certain traits that we can look for that kind of thing um, and once we're able to do that then we can talk a little bit more about the, the Bronze Age populations hopefully and looking at um, who was living here um, who was being buried in particular places whether there's any patterning to where they're buried or how they're buried dependent on time period, age, sex, that kind of thing. Um, so that's what I've been doing here for the past uh, couple of years actually, been here last year and this year. And then with the pot excavation, being able to actually excavate it myself means that I'm able to tell a little bit more about um, how the bones were placed in the pot and whether there's anything about sort of general cremation practices that might be a bit different than what I thought based on what I've seen in the past where the bones have always been previously excavated for me. So um, the pot excavation was really good for us to be able to get a better idea of how things are actually being done here um, in the Bronze Age and hopefully as Rachel continues to excavate in the mound um, other cremations and other well hopefully other burials come up in general um, we always get more out of an inhumation like a non-burned burial than we can out of a, a burned burial unfortunately but um, yeah so hopefully we'll be able to get more information out of that Part of this project has also included a series of radiocarbon sampling um, to get some dates across the whole period, but also some stable isotope analysis. And for the small number of inhumations, hopefully, fingers crossed, there'll be some DNA analysis. So they're really, Rachel and Chris are really taking on a whole spectrum of different um, techniques to try and get as much information as they can out of these sort of either long excavated, uh, long ago excavated burials or now the, the modern excavation. So it's really, really exciting.